Why are you wearing the hat? I just made it myself. Isn't it cute? Speaking of needlessly changing things... Who did this? <laughs> Suicide Squad! Oh! This movie... Let me start. Okay. This movie had great characters in it, surprise, surprise. But we learned very, very little about most of the characters, and in the end, nothing really happened other than a couple action scenes. Yeah, like the whole time I was sitting there thinking, do I like this because of the ideas that are in it, or do I like this because it's a good movie? And it's not a very good movie, and they really mishandled some of the characters. My biggest problem with this movie was that every character spent the whole time making cool comments and saying, I'm bad, but the entire movie, all they did was make the right choice and make the right decision. They didn't do anything of badass or awesome. Yeah, they did a lot of telling when, like, in film you should show the audience what was going on instead of just being like, hey, I have a really sad and tortured past. Or even with, like, Harley Quinn, she just kept saying, I'm so crazy, guys, but show us that she's crazy. Because as, like, right now, I don't believe that but she's crazy. She had smeared lipstick. She's gotta be crazy. I don't know where to start, really, with this movie, because there's a lot of really bad stuff, and... I just don't feel like going into it. <laughs> it's not worth the time. I think the one really good thing this movie did was, like you said, it makes you want to read the comics. It makes you interested in all the characters. Yeah. It's just so disappointing how nothing really happened and yeah, anything that's... Yeah, let's, let's go into that. So the plot is like, they go into the city to stop this non-human entity, but all that really happens is, like, they run into these weird soldiers and then fight them, and then... They save the black girl. No, no, so they, like, they fight the soldiers, and then they fight the non-human, and then the movie's over. And they manage to stretch that out for two hours. And it's just not entertaining. Like, I, I was expecting something more like Scott Pilgrim or like Guardians of the Galaxy where they took these insane characters and just like slowly ramped up the action. But they spent so much time telling us about their pasts and I didn't, like, they, they changed the characters too much for me to really care. And I do feel bad for the movie makers because there are so many good characters. So in order to take time and let you understand who each and every single one of them is and then show the plot, it's it's a lot. But you can't... The best way to show a character is to have them do things. Is to have things constantly happening and changing and that didn't happen. We just got little biopics of all of them. Yeah, like it was the whole... I, I do feel like I know a lot of each character, but not actually about them. I know about their life. Like, I don't know anything about Captain Boomerang as much as I like him in this movie. I just know that he was a criminal. I don't know that much about the Spanish guy, the Diablo, he but I know that he killed his family. I don't know that much about Deadshot, but I know that he has a daughter. And I wanted to know more about them. And they, they've tried way too hard to make you care about them and pity them and, like, be, like, they, they tried way too hard to make you, what's that word? Sympathize? The word that I hate. Care. 
they, they tried way too hard to make you relate to these characters, when if they just made them fun to watch, you wouldn't have really cared. You had something to say? Don't make me kick you. You wanted to talk about the Native Indian American. Guy. I know he really bothered you. Yeah, I, I was really excited to see him because he seemed like such an interesting villain. And I... I was just like, oh, a Native American guy, that's really cool, that's something different. But but then he, he was literally in the movie to die to show off that they had implanted these things in their necks that they said were bombs and they the reason why he was in the movie was to show that they were actually bombs which i don't think is something that the characters would actually doubt but i did realize that the characters who did doubt it were the characters who weren't actually in the prison so i guess it makes a little bit of sense and then and then like after they they made the uh deal with the government, like they, they got ready to fight the soldiers as they were leaving. What, like right before they were gonna leave, and it, like why? They made a deal with the soldiers to fight. Why would? Why why at that point why were they like all right these soldiers are just gonna come beat me? Why why weren't they just like getting ready to be moved? And I also really didn't like their motivation that much because. I feel like someone in their position would be really excited to get out of prison for any any reason. If they were real villains, they'd be excited to just get out and kick some ass. Yeah, they'd be excited. Like, what? You mean we get to be dropped in the middle of a war zone and just do whatever we want? And we get time off our prison sentence? Okay. <laughs> like, I, I don't think they needed to do all of this blackmail torture stuff. That was such a long part of the movie. They could have just... They, they honestly could have just had, like, a sign-up sheet in a normal prison and had all of them walk up. And I would have been more okay with that. I did want to talk about the beginning of this movie, too. Like, the first two scenes of this movie were so... pointless. They didn't do anything at all. They were just there. And I, there were a lot of, like, problems behind the scenes with the producers and the executives interfering, and I'm assuming that's something that the filmmaker did not want. Because there's, like, a pop song, and then it's the introduction of Will Smith. And then there's another pop song, and it's the introduction of Harley Quinn. And then there's a third pop song, and this is where I presume the movie was supposed to open, where the government employees like driving and then meets this other government employee and is like, hey, I want to assemble this team of villains. And that's another scene that I think really suffered from showing way too much. That Are you, are you going to jump in at any point? I'm going to need you to white people. Yeah, I didn't get that joke, and if I did get that joke, it's really stupid, because... It's your white son did bad in school, but the dad's gonna slip him some money and then the school's gonna say he did okay. Except Ivy League colleges are pretty much a laughing stock now, <laughs> because they did that. Because all they really care about are, like, athletics, and so nobody really considers Ivy League colleges to be that big of a deal. There's the scene where um, they're going through all the villains, and that that seemed like a weird place to have like all those, all the video of their past. And I have a feeling that they were just supposed to like go through the pages and show them and talk about them. And then it was supposed to go to the boardroom where she talked about Dr. Moon. And then it was supposed to go to the airplane strip where all of these villains were thrown together in like this weird setting and that's where they first meet. And I, that would have been a much stronger introduction than like the 12 minute music video we got. I really hated how the pop music was all like super cool old classic music, yeah. And I also really, really hate that they chose to use Dr. Moon as their example and not that Asian girl. 
because clearly that Asian girl was super loyal and like exactly what they were looking for, and Dr. Moon was super unstable. But the Asian girl was just like a person with a magic sword. So I can understand why they went with the witch, but I don't understand why they thought they could control the witch that much. Especially when the person who has her heart is nowhere near where they're using the witch. Like, the only time she was like, oh, I need to stop what I'm doing because they're gonna kill me, was when she saw that the person who had the heart was about to stab it. And then they're, like, miles away, and they try it again. Speaking of the introduction of the characters... <laughs> yes? I really didn't like how they talked about Captain Boomerang, because the people they talked about in that scene were all in the prison. And then when Captain Boomerang was introduced, he like came out of the bag as if he was just arrested. And then they introduced the Asian girl and the Native American guy, and it was like, why, why didn't she talk about them? So. They retroactively made that scene stupid by either excluding these two people who they didn't have full control over, or including this one person who they didn't have full control over. It was just like an introduction of the main characters, and it... You can't do that. I feel, Things need to be consistent. I feel like when they were making this movie, they split them up into, these are the important ones, and these are the not important ones. And then they were like, this is a too clear of a divide. We need a couple scenes to just mix them up and shuffle them around so you can't tell. I, like, the only important ones were Harley Quinn and Deadshot. Oh gosh, the croc. He didn't say anything the entire movie, and then the very first thing he says is a one-liner. It's just I like Gru. This movie was trying to ape Guardians of the Galaxy so much. You mentioned the music. Yep. They had like so many just stupid jokes that didn't fit the characters, and I'm not saying that's what Guardians is. Guardians is really good, but ever since the success of Guardians of the Galaxy, I've seen like every superhero movie is trying to capture that. And this needed to be different. Even movies like like this movie and Deadpool, where it's modern and It's gangster. just like, throw in some old pop music, bro. That's what the audience wants. It's because old music is cool. This movie had a song that was in Guardians of the Galaxy, probably because it tested well with audiences, and... It's at, on the radio now. People recognize yeah, it. As, as the credits rolled by, I counted, and there were 23 <laughs> licensed songs in this movie. And almost, like, if you listen to them side by side, almost none of them would go together. Can you imagine if they sold these songs to the CD? The, the thing about Batman is that the characters in his comics are usually very educated people. They're not, like, ignorant people. They're usually very smart and very aware, but yes. they have a one-sided thought of how things should be. And that makes a good villain. But in this movie, everybody was like... You talking about these are car stereos? These are cassette decks, mo- This one ain't even cassette deck, it's a CD. I'm so sick of seeing movies like this. Also, the unicorn jokes. I'm really sick of seeing that. They really ruined the Joker, which is probably what a lot of people are going to be watching this to find out. Um, it was weird because, like, he didn't even have a smile. It, it was a tattoo on his hand that he kept holding up, and it was just stupid. But the moral of this story is that tattoos are cool. Like, he owned, he owned a strip club and was dealing with other gangsters. It just... The Joker is above all of that. <laughs> They... Yeah. He sucks in this. He's just like a criminal with face paint on. He doesn't do anything out of the ordinary or bizarre. He's he's a lot like Tuco from Breaking Bad, if you know him. He's just like a really aggressive crime lord. And the best part is, is his constant devotion to Harley Quinn and I. Yeah, yeah, I hated how they ruined the relationship between them. Because they're 
abusive relationship was not only very funny because they found humor in it, but it was just, it was more interesting to watch. And this was just like, Harley is my fire, she's my flame, she's my girl, I love her. Your pudding pop? And then Harley's like, oh, Mr. J, I want to get married to you and have kids and live a normal life. Because I'm not actually crazy. I'm just pretending because I like you so much. <laughs> we can dye our hair normal colors. And that's, that's not who these people are at all. And I hated it. I hated it so much. Like, every joke Harley Quinn made was just... Guys, isn't it funny and cute how crazy I am? It's no. like something a high schooler would say. It, oh yeah, she's she's very much so a high schooler. It's her attention-seeking attitude, which is pretty fitting to Harley Quinn, I think, within reason. But not it to this extent. And it's such a it's such a modern high school girl. I really wish Harley Quinn had spent less time like hitting people with her bat and shooting people, and she had used her gymnastics more. Because they made a point to show that she was flexible and a gymnast, and it would have been really cool to see her do more acrobatic combat. Yeah, and that is kind of like a big part of her character. The action in this all around was just very... It, like, they weren't really using their abilities, they were just like, punching or shooting. And it wasn't really fun to watch. Something I want you to admit in this review is that you liked this better than most of the recent Marvel movies. Yes, I did think this was better than the majority of Marvel movies. And this is probably the best DC movie out of the three they've made so far. As boring and meandering as it was, there was a lot of stuff I liked in it. And seeing the trailer for Wonder Woman or Supergirl or whatever she is made this look really appealing? Yes. <laughs> Like, I, I would put this somewhere in between... Maybe. Because as, as bland as the action was, it was... It, it was... I, I cared about it. Other than this having great characters that we barely saw, I didn't like a lot about this movie. I did not... It, it wasn't enjoyable. I don't want to see it again. Yeah, I probably wouldn't watch this again. I think I would watch Captain America again. I don't think I'd I would watch, watch that again. movie again. Okay. As good as the first half is, it just goes to implodes. It was better than the Avengers. Let's put it that way. They really didn't use these characters to do that much. This was just like an introduction to the characters, and they could have covered that very quickly. Like, they, they could have had a rush introduction of everybody, and then a good movie, or they just could have had a good movie where people were slowly introduced, and you learned more about them. So you think they intend to make more of these? Yes! Okay. Why else would they keep alive after making her such a villain? They really didn't use these characters very well. I, I, the only interesting part, I think, was when Batman kissed Harley Quinn. Because I, I want to know... There are certain plots in the comics where they, like, have a relationship, and it could also be, like, maybe he was dating her before she went crazy, or, yeah. or I, I want to know more about that. But see, and I, I feel the same way where I want to know more about that, but I didn't like that scene, because I, this whole movie did that to me, where it was like, oh... That's a cool thing. I want to know more about that. And then the movie went in the complete opposite direction, and you never saw it again. So you're saying it's like Star Wars Episode Seven, where it's just <laughs> like, see the sequel. No, really, see the sequel. Do you want to know what's going on? Then you need to see the sequel. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Well, go see the sequel. This movie, like, I, I really liked how Croc kept licking, licking things. And every time that happened, I was like, oh, that's cool, and then it was a smack in the face because I knew, like, then it just transitioned to crap again, and I would never know what that meant, or... I don't really get, like, they were treating him as this... as this animal acting on instinct for the first 40 minutes of the movie, 
anybody who walked into his jail cell was under threat of being killed by this actual crocodile in the shape of a man, and, and then he stops being an animal. And he starts being human, and it's... There needed to be, like, some kind of... difference? Yeah, that's around the time when they all decided they were family and true friends, and this is a special bond they've never had with anyone else, and I, I don't know what happened to cause all of that. I thought the editing was really weird in a lot of the scenes, like, it would kind of just cut to somewhere, and, you know, I was smart enough to figure out where they were now and what was going on, like, using context clues, but it just seemed like they were missing establishing shots back and forth between the different places, and then you were just, like, put in this place and it was weird for a little bit. I feel like the catchphrase of this movie was, there's no time for that, just keep things going. Like, when it comes to the cutting, the editing, the characters, everything, it's just, there's no time, keep going, keep things moving. I really liked the scene where the soldier came in and was like, alright, I'm done, you guys can go, and Captain Boomerang just immediately leaves, because that's, that was a funny, well-timed joke. But then... And then they retroactively ruined it, because he just comes back. Even though his only characterization up to that point was that he wanted to leave. Alright, what else do you have to say? Wonder Woman looks really bad. <laughs> now I'm sad. I'm sad now. Just like this movie made you? Yeah. Do you think they're just cutting out all of these scenes to sell an extended version? So they can sell the movie twice? Or maybe because the producers think we'll get bored if it's too long. We'll get bored if it makes sense.